why is it that you decided to start having those conversations? And I know earlier you said, you know, when you're when you're a basketball player and you can and you can ball, right? Let's just be clear. Let's be clear. You're a basketball player and you can ball, right? You can hoop. Then people do listen to you. When did you decide to say, okay, I think more people need to start hearing this about about mental health? Like, let's have this conversation. Um, it wasn't even on purpose. Um, everyone like I said, that's why I think it's so funny when people like that don't know me from jump know my story because they think like I'm this great person and I'm so courageous and I'm like, bro, this was an accident. <laughs> God is good. <laughs> like, <laughs> like and, and, and it's also something I'm very proud of because people that have seen me grow up and seen the person I've come become like nobody thought I was going to turn into this. Mm. What? Dang. Please. Ain't nobody see this in my future. So. Oh, yeah. You know, I think for me, like when I was 19, um, well, high school was very hard for me. I got kicked out of my house, committed. Like high school was a mess for me. Mm. College was very much my saving grace because it was stability. Um, mm. I had access to mental health resources I never had. Um, I had health insurance. Like, <laughs> like college was like really saving grace for me. Um, and so during that time, I had figured out that I was sexually abused growing up. I was like coming to terms with that. Um, I was getting vocabulary words such as depression. Right. Mm. Mental illness. I didn't like I had no concept of those things. I just mm. knew how I felt. I just knew that it was I, I always felt like there was something wrong with me. I never really had. I just always felt different. Mm -hmm. um, and like so going leaving high school, going into early college, I was getting like confirmation of how I've been feeling. Right. I was getting words to describe these things. Um, and my poetry was becoming a little deeper as well. At the time, I was writing a poem confronting my abuser. And Austin has a really big um, poetry scene. Mm. Um, so I was getting into slam poetry and performing my pieces. And um, my coach, I had to miss something in the summer to go do slam poetry called Brave New Voices. And my coach was like, you could do it, but you got to take Longhorn Network. Um, Long, I don't even think Longhorn Network exists anymore. Uh, I, 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 think, I think it still does. It does? They, they, they created like a whole, they got like a podcast network thing going on. Yeah. So... At the time, right, I was like, cool, nobody gets Longhorn Network. Like, <laughs> right, it's going to come on on Thursday, like, whatever. And the piece I was performing, they thought we were going to be talking about, like, rainbows and sunshine. Uh -huh. And the piece I was performing was really hard and heavy. And they were like, whoa, like, <laughs> are you comfortable talking about this? And it's literally a clip of me at 19-year-olds being like, eh, I probably gonna regret it when I get older, but sure, let's do it. <laughs> and I'm thinking, like, right, like, no one's going to see this. Like, who cares? Yeah, yeah, for sure. ESPN owns Longhorn Network. ESPN sees the piece, they're like, it's got to be bigger. Turns it into Sports Center feature. It becomes so much bigger than me. The dude that wrote the piece actually won like an award about it. Like, it becomes this huge thing. They start running it during March Madness. Every time I, before I play, they run a the piece. Mm. Anytime Texas is on screen, they run a the piece. Wow. It's huge. And I remember being so scared, like ashamed, embarrassed. And the craziest thing happened. Like, so many people I know my entire life, people I never met, reached out to me like, yo, this was my story. Like, I've never been able to tell nobody, but this is what I went through. Or like, thank you so much for like confirming mm -hmm. me, right? Affirming the things I feel or who I've been. Um, and at that moment, I was like, it's like a light switch came on. Like, oh, this is why I'm 6'7". This is why every time I tried to kill myself, it didn't work. This is why I was given this, these burdens and this story. This is it. Like... This is the purpose. This is why I play ball. So that I can use my platform to not only speak of God's grace and God's power, but to show people that there's more. Like, that this isn't going to be your last moment. This isn't going to be, like, your entire story. That there's something after this trauma. And furthermore, every time I looked for mental health or mental illness growing up, it was somebody super happy, somebody jumping off a bridge, and they were probably white. Mm -hmm. It was never nobody looked like me. Mm -hmm. Nobody came from where I came from. Um, and it was nobody that had my story. So I was like, oh, all these mics in my face are here for a reason. Like, this is what we're doing. Um, and it just kind of took off from there. Like, and every time, and like, I'm a preacher's kid, so, you know, God's good. I'm always going to mention God. Uh, but every time I felt like it was uncomfortable or like I was embarrassed by it, like I would meet somebody that was like, thank you so much. Or this is my story. And I'm so appreciative of you doing this. Or... Um, like, I read your poem, and it gave me a reason. And, like, I can't, I can't put into words those experiences. Like, it just is, it, like, it's so crazy living in a dark place and finding your purpose and finding that reason where you're, like, this is what it's for. 
Mm. So to me, everything always boils down to those moments. Like that's it. Like I, I get why I do everything I do. Like my purpose in life is to create safe spaces. What does that look like for me tangibly and everywhere I go? A lot of that means that I got to tell my story. And even when it's uncomfortable, like I'm doing the younger version of me a disservice. 